Welcome back to the Malt Miller YouTube channel, Home Brewers. And in this video, we're taking a close look at pH meters. Now in a lot of our recent videos, we've talked quite a lot about using pH meters in the brewing process to really make sure that you nail your mash pH. When we went down to Cornwall recently and filmed with Verdant, actually one of James's top tips for home brewing was to be taking pH readings right throughout as many steps of the process that you can. And also when we filmed with Radim and also with Brett as part with our Brew With You series, they were also taking pH readings of their mash to make sure that they were within spec to get the best out of their mash. Now you might be asking, what difference does pH actually make during the brewing process? And we're gonna dive into that in a bit more detail now. The first thing that you should really know and always focus on if you're gonna be taking pH readings is the pH of your mash. Now, if you can remember back to your secondary school science classes, pH is a scale of alkalinity all the way through to acidic. The lower the pH, the more acidic the environment or liquid is. The higher the pH, the more alkaline the environment or liquid is. And that makes a big difference when we talk about brewing and especially in the mash. Now the ideal pH range when we're mashing is between 5.2 and 5.5. So it is slightly acidic. And this benefits the enzymes that are in the grains helping them to convert the starches into sugars really efficiently. What this will also do is give you better precipitation of the proteins and polypeptides that are present when we're brewing beer. Now what that will ultimately mean is you're gonna have a reduced risk of chill haze in your finished beer. Also, hitting the right pH range means that you're gonna get better hop utilization throughout the boil process, thus getting the IBUs that you want, but also retaining some of the flavor and aroma that you want from those hops when you add them later on in the boil. Now the ideal mash pH will vary from style to style. You can check this out using some of the brewing software that's available to see what's right for your recipe. But once we cast it into the fermenter after the brewing process, the pH will have dropped even further. Now what this does is provides microbiological protection. So it's gonna inhibit growth of some of those things in our beer that actually we don't want growing in there. And this is gonna give your beer a longer shelf life. It's gonna make sure that it stays fresh in the keg and the bottle for longer. And you're gonna really inhibit growth of any of those nasty microbiological organisms that could be prevalent in some cases. Now it's worth noting that in general, beer is quite a hostile environment for microbiological growth. We've covered that in some other videos. There's some links up here that you can check out if you wanna learn a little bit more about that. When we went and spent some time with the team up at Brew Lab and really getting to grips with kind of yeast health, yeast propagation, and understanding what's going on in our fermenters. Now the last and probably most important thing about getting the right pH in your beer is that it promotes yeast health. Our yeast is a living organism and we should always do everything we can to treat it with the utmost respect and actually give it the best chance possible of fermenting our beer so that we end up with the beer that we were planning all the way back when we started thinking about whatever brew it is we're doing. Now having a pH meter in your brewing arsenal is a great addition. They're relatively inexpensive, easy to use, and easy to care for, but there are some things you need to note. First and foremost, keep it clean. Like all of our brewing equipment, we need to make sure it's kept clean after every use. Secondly, you need to learn how to calibrate it. Now calibrating a pH meter might seem daunting and complicating, but we're gonna come on to exactly how you do that in a moment. Once you've done that calibration, you know that you can trust the readings that you're getting, which means that any adjustments you might make to your pH in your mash are correct, and you're not gonna accidentally overshoot or undershoot your pH, causing you problems with a finished beer later down the line. So without further ado, let's dive into how to calibrate a pH meter. Now calibrating your pH meter is a relatively straightforward process. There's just a few important steps to take to make sure that you calibrate it accurately. Now the first thing we need is our buffer solutions. Most pH meters come with these in the box, but you can also buy replacements so that you can calibrate your pH meter when you need to. We're also gonna need a few essential items, such as some distilled water, 
three equal sized glasses or vials that can hold 250 milliliters, a spoon and a measuring jug. We need to measure out 250 milliliters of our distilled water into each cup. Pour the distilled water into each cup, making sure to accurately measure the volume so that it's equal across all three. Now what I like to do then is line up the pH buffer solution in the order that we're going to be doing this. Now it's important to read the instructions for your particular pH meter as some will vary in the process of calibration. Ours is relatively simple. You start with the lowest pH buffer solution and work your way through to the highest. We start by cutting open the bag for our lowest buffer solution. In this case it's 4.01 and this is going to be the first we're going to measure. Pour it into our distilled water and make sure that we give it a really, really good stir to dissolve the entirety of the powder to make sure that we're gonna be able to get an accurate reading. Now, before we move on to the next one, give our spoon a quick rinse in some more distilled water, then move on to mixing up our middle buffer solution, which is 6.86, and then finally our higher pH solution, which is gonna be 9.18. Now these buffer solutions work at 25 degrees C, so make sure that the temperature of your solutions is in that range. Now we can turn on our pH meter, take the cover off exposing the probe, pop it into the first solution and hold the calibration button. Now our pH meter will automatically detect which buffer solution we're using. You press and hold until it stops flashing, we know that calibration is correct. We can then move on to our second one, which is gonna be for our 6.86 solution. And again, once it stops flashing, we know that the calibration for this midpoint has been done. Now, finally, we can move on to our most alkaline solution. Press and hold again until the reading shows. It will flash for a few moments and then stop. Now, one other thing to note, in between each of the buffer solutions, it's important that we give our pH meter a quick rinse in our distilled water again, just to make sure that we don't carry any of the previous solution over. We can now switch off our pH meter, pop the protective cover back on, and we know that we are good to go in our next brew. So now we've calibrated our pH meter, we know we can use it during the brewing process to take accurate readings. Now we're gonna jump into how you can actually use a pH meter on brew day to take the pH of your mash, but then also how to adjust the pH of your mash. To adjust the pH of your mash, you're gonna need an acid such as lactic acid or phosphoric acid. You're also going to need a couple of items, a small jar to take a sample of mash with, a water bath to put that sample in to cool it down to the appropriate temperature, and also a syringe to measure out the amount of acid that you're gonna to add to your mash. Now we start by pouring out a small amount of our lactic acid here. It's important that when we dough in, we make sure that all the grains are added and thoroughly stirred in before we consider taking a sample out, making sure that we haven't got any dough balls and that every single part of the mash is thoroughly wetted. Then we can draw off a small sample of the mash, maybe 20 or 30 mils, including some of the grain, and we add it to our water bath. Now we need to cool this down rapidly to the temperature range that our pH meter is able to accept. Now the pH meter that we're using today is temperature compensated, so it can handle samples that are up to 50 degrees C. This isn't the case for all pH meters though, so check the specifications on your model. Now we can add our pH meter into the sample, wait for the reading on the screen to settle down, which might take a moment or two, now we can work out how much acid to add back into our mash to bring the pH down to our desired level. We like to do this in a couple of stages and add a small amount at a time, making sure that we stir the mash thoroughly to incorporate the lactic acid before drawing off a second sample and re-measuring to see exactly where we've come to. Now you may need to do this a couple of times to make sure you hit the correct pH for your mash. As you can see, we've hit ours at 5.4. Okay, so there we go folks, that's how we use a pH meter and how we calibrate it during the brewing process. Now, as I said, you can use these in various different parts of the brewing process, but I would strongly encourage you first and foremost to focus on nailing your mash pH. If you can understand the pH that's going on in your mash, it will pay dividends all the way through the rest of the brewing process.
Now, if you've got any questions, thoughts, or comments about this video, anything in particular about using a pH meter that we've not covered, please drop it down in the comments section below and we will get back to you. Other than that, all that remains for me to say is if you made it to the end of the video, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and don't forget you can always follow us on Facebook, Instagram, X, and of course, TikTok. Have a great brew.